everyone, it's Julia. I have a thrifted project for you today. We picked out this pair of jeans in my last video when I took you through the, to the thrift store. And it is a child size jeans. And then also this piece of cotton fabric. Um, it's $2 a yard and it is about a yard. I don't need all of it. Um, just about a third of a yard is what I ended up using. And then I needed a contrasting piece. So I just dug through my stash and I got this this red it has a little bit of a stripe to it and this is what we're going to be making I made um, these for my children when they were little and we had so much fun this is actually the adult one this was mine that you're seeing right now but I, I gave them as gifts a week before Christmas and they were thrilled about having an early Christmas present but then we got to bake with them and we decorated cookies and, and it was just fun we used them for a couple years before they outgrew them so maybe it'll give you an idea of a cute little Christmas gift. First thing we do need to do is some deconstruction. I'm gonna cut the legs off, and I do leave about an, two inches below um, the crotch. I've just removed, or pulled up some of those pockets because I didn't wanna cut the pockets. Just flip that over so I'm cutting about the same distance. opening that crotch. And then when I cut the side seams, I cut about three fourths of an inch uh, away from the, from the seam. And that's gonna be the fabric that I fold back. I'm gonna do the same to the other side, about three fourths of an inch away from that side seam. And then I want to use one of the pockets. Just gonna be cutting that. I saved the top of this for different things too, so I put that aside, and then removing that back fabric too from the pocket. I want about 10 inches of my one pants leg. That hem of the pants leg is actually the top of this bib. And I don't use the other pants like at all in, the, in this project. Just gonna cut up. I use the inside seam, it's not as bulky. And then that outside seam I'll be cutting off. I folded back the bottom part of the jeans because I wanna see, uh, I wanna cut that at about the same as that folded back bottom part. Hope that makes sense. The top is going to be a little bit narrower because when I fold that side seams, it's going to be a little bit narrower than the bottom. Just going to top stitch this into place. And then notice how this other one, the first one I made, I surged the whole thing. And I realized that most, a lot of you don't have sergers. And so I'm just gonna zigzag to finish my side seams and zigzag all the way around. I do have that zigzag done now and I'm just gonna fold back this side seam. That bottom I've also zigzagged and that I'm not gonna fold back. I'm just gonna leave that. Same with the top, I'm, I folded that under and then ironed it. I do not have to fold the top or the bottom on this one. Measuring all the way around this, and mine measured about 39 inches, and I want my ruffle to be twice that. And so I'm gonna be cutting my ruffle five inches wide, and I'm gonna be cutting two widths of this fabric. And this fabric is about 42 inches wide. So I'm cutting two of those. And this is for the wider ruffle. The top ruffle will be cut at three inches wide. And I'm doing that right now. And I am cutting two of these as well. So two of the widths. And I need a new sharper blade. Looks like I'm having struggling with that. Yep. There we go, and I'm gonna join these by mitering. So it's easy, just right sides together at a 45 degree angle. 
and then from one corner to the other stitch and then I'll have one continual strip and I do that the same with the wider one cutting that triangle and then I'm going to open up my sides open up that seam and then folding these. So the wrong sides are together and we'll fold these all the way down. And I'll do this for both of these, both the, the, the narrower and the wider. And then I'm gonna zigzag this raw edge. It's all zigzag now. And I'm gonna share with you two ways to ruffle. This is my old ruffler. Look at this old dilapidated box. It's, I've had it for years. Um, but when I did craft shows with these aprons, I used to sell these at craft shows, the ruffler really helped. It just saves a lot of time. I'm just going to share that with you. And then the other way to ruffle a long strip like this is to use a cord. And I'm going to also show how you zigzag over a cord or a heavy thread to, to, zig to um, do the ruffling. Okay, I'm at my, at my sewing machine and this ruffler is on and it it's, takes the place of your presser foot and it sits in front. And it, the fabric just goes underneath this plate and then you just straight stitch and it just tucks it and ruffles it. You can adjust the, the size of the ruffle or, or the tuck um, by messing with your stitch length and, and there's also a little dial or not different notches. So you can experiment, but this is about two times, or, or it's going to be, if you, if you ruffle 20 inches, it's going to end up like 10 inches. And my other one, I am going to just lay this cord and zigzag on top of the cord. Well, you don't want to go into the cord. You want the zig to go on one side and the zag to go on the other side. So I do have a narrower zigzag. And you just want to make sure that's right down the center and then it's really easy to do. This is the one that I used the ruffler on and I'm just going to pin it into place. It actually came out to be almost perfect after I did the adjusting on it. And then putting a pin in the, in the center of this wider one and putting that pin in the center of my little denim and then pulling. And you can pull on both ends of this and just keep pulling until it fits all the way around. Pinning as I go. And then this will be top stitched from on top. And that's my going to be my next step and you know blue jeans are blue jeans and there's some areas that are just tough to sew through and of course you can't sew through this this rivet so I stop on both sides of it and then also I've got both of them sewn on now and I again just sewed right on the, just top stitched them right underneath on and this is also a bulky spot but that's I just left it it's just a hole but it is completely covered up with the tie so that's not a problem at all. And now pinning the two together, I just have that top tucked, tucked under or tucked behind. I open up my, the fly and I'm going to top stitch that side first and then close it and do the other side. And again, I walk my presser or walk my machine over those belt loops because that's another spot right there that's a little bit tricky and it's all sewn on now and it's on to the tie for the tie you're going to want to cut your two strips at five inches and i didn't have enough fabric and so i cut mine at four inches and it worked but i would recommend maybe going a little bit wider if you have the fabric my scrap is is cut on that left so i i wasn't able to get the full the full length it looks like i have enough fabric there but i didn't i'm going to miter this so i'm cutting 
um, right sides together and just doing a little um, 45 degree angle there. Cut that, ironed it, and then I'm gonna fold right sides together and iron this all the way down. Once that is completely ironed, I'm gonna cut 20 inches off of one end. And then I'm going to just cut right down this folded side. So I'm gonna have two strips of 20 inches. And this is gonna be the neck the neck, um, the neck tie, right sides together, and I'm just ironing that. And this will be stitched using a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Now for the t the other tie, I want to leave about an eight inch opening, so I just used a little mark there so I didn't forget. Also going to be point doing pointed ends so I'm going to stitch I drew those on just so I don't for just to get them a little bit more even and I'm going to stitch right through that that marking and then do again a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down until I get to the opening on both ends Just trimming those pointed corners or ends. And then we'll be sticking my little turny tool. Don't know what these are called, but you know, it's got a little hook on the end, so I'm hooking it. And then we'll be pulling it through. And then you do this for both ends. And then I'm also gonna do, to do it for my, for my neckties. rolling and ironing and pressing it and this will be top stitched and when I do the top stitching it will also close up that opening just folding that opening underneath and giving it a good press Everything is top stitched. I want to find the center of this tie and then I'm just going to put it through the belt loops. I love how it just finishes it off. It just adds such a nice little touch to it. Just sticking that right in the center there. And then this is, this is secured at both ends and I just stitch right through that, that wider ruffle right on the end there. And this, I'm going to pin those neckties into place, and that'll be top stitched. I want to decorate the pocket a little, and I have this cookie cutter, this little gingerbread cookie cutter. This is a fun way, if you have a favorite cookie cutter that you use, or if your child loves, I'm just tracing it onto heat and bond light. And then this will be ironed onto the back side of a piece of fabric. Fussy cut out. And then pressed into place. I dug in my rickrack. I thought it'd be fun to add just a little bit of rickrack to this. I'm gonna take the, and then I wanna add some eyes. I'm just drawing those eyes on. I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine. I have my zigzag on, or just gonna light, or do a narrow zigzag all the way around this, just to applique it into place. And then also zigzagging the rickrack. I changed to red thread here. 
and then I'm going to change to black thread and put the eyes on and I do have my free motion foot on here and I'm just going to go back and forth and around in a little circle pinning this on and then I decided I wanted a smile on this little guy's face so I took it back off again added the smile with free motion stitching and this will be top stitched right into place as well and it's finished I hope you enjoyed this I have some pictures at the end they're just cheerful and fun and I hope you enjoyed this bye everybody have a great weekend